Hello, South Africa, and welcome. My name is Kamogelo Dipoko, your host of the DPSA Batubili podcast. Today, we tackle part two of the Masterclass on Business Process Management facilitated by the Chief Director, Operations Management for the DPSA, Marcel Wilson. Deputy Director, Red Tape Reduction, Bandi Lengolomba, takes us through the case study that the Red Tape Reduction Unit in the Western Cape Department of Economic Development and Tourism utilize when approaching and implementing business process management within a local municipality. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So if I can just go straight into it, this is a case study which um, we thought we should share with you guys. And it's, it's in relation to a recent project that we currently undertaking with the Stellenbosch municipality. I think if I can also just provide a little bit of context as to how we got to this point, uh, this point in the process. Last year with our municipal ease of doing business fund, we initially had um, undertaken a process to, to receive market feedback, as well as request the call to action for municipalities to submit proposals where they require support. And within that process, we had received an application from the Stellenbosch municipality as well, where they required our assistance in the review of the, the building development management department, specifically focusing on the, the built environment or the building plan application administration process. So fast forward to 2022-23, we we had gone the, the process of, of um, collaborating with the municipality and within the collaboration we, we wanted to ensure that we, we helped them identify areas of um, improvement in order to unlock the full potential and operational peak of the department and as part of this exercise uh, we've, re- we've just broken it up into three phases but all within the phases um, contains its own respective processes and uh, steps but under the phase one, it involved the uh, investigation into the current state or the current situation, as well as um, including data collection and analysis of processes from an internal perspective. And also coupled within this phase one, it looked at the, the different sets of stakeholders as well and creating that environment within which the, the employees are able to feel comfortable to share what it is that they are busy with, what it is that their job entails and how that um, subsequently makes them feel and where they make their bottlenecks as well. Then within the phase two, it it looked towards a a benchmarking exercise and included in that benchmarking and stakeholder mapping exercise, there was also engagements with our external stakeholders. And by means of external stakeholders, you're looking at businesses, We're looking at um, the the community as well in order to determine what is the the current perceptions out there of the the department and the municipality. And also what this this particular phase um, uh, involved, it it also looked at um, identifying what the enablers would be in order to improve services internally. So in essence, it's, it's all about finding out or determining what does success look like for the respective stakeholders? And coupled with that would be a comparative data analysis of the, the applications and or the database. Then when we go into the phase three of the, of the project, this was pretty much the consolidation of a diagnostics report. And within this report, it detailed improvement recommendations as well as showed a, a, a conversion view from the current as is moving towards the to be or the desired state. So as, as mentioned in collaboration with the Stellenbosch municipality, the, the overall process in which, in which we needed to have a, a review of, it was all about ensuring that the, the municipality ensures that business process approvals for the application submitted are received and granted um, and or rejected within the legislated timeframes. And in this instance, we looked at building applications that are less than 500 square meters, which fall within the um, less than 30 day period, 
and building applications that are in excess of 500 square meters, those have to fall within the legislated 60-day SLA. So in terms of what, what the, the, the overall process entailed and what, what was the result from that, it, it pretty much gave us an understanding as to what were the, the time wasters in the processes. It, it gave us an understanding as to where there are inefficiencies, gave us an understanding of what the public sentiment is as well. That's something which we, we don't necessarily factor in. And basically what this also highlighted for us is within the report breakdown is how do we go about identifying and improving the efficiencies, basically to shorten the approvals lead times. We talked about the improvement of the level of service delivery and lastly, improving staff morale. So in terms of the recommendations, um, so the first one I wanted to talk about was the, the building plan application management system or the BPAM system, which Stellenbosch municipality uses. And in essence, this is already a digitized process for businesses to submit the applications. It's fully an end-to-end -end digital acquisition funnel. However, in engagements with, with external stakeholders and businesses, we found that there was a lot of frustration when it came to um, encountering the, the portal, how to submit the applications. They found it to be quite a, a lengthy process. So what this recommendation pretty much outlines is how do we go about um, optimizing the, the UX experience or the user journey? What's an important thing to highlight as well is that from the one of the, the respondents that we that we had engaged with, it 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 came to our attention that because of the current experience of the system, it left them feeling that they they would not want to um, look to putting in a business within the respective region and would much opt to go to another region where the experience for them was a lot more seamless with the applications. So as you can see. A, a simple customer journey, it can have um, potentially negative ramifications in terms of economic development within a respective region. Another recommendation as well uh, spoke to the resource capacitations of the resource capacitation of the building development department. And again, I think this is, is it can be a bit of a, a contentious point where some people could easily say, we, we aren't able to perform, we need more warm bodies, and then they get warm bodies, but it doesn't necessarily translate into higher performance. So I think in, in, in this particular example, during the analysis period, it was, it, was, it was established that from the data that we had received between the periods of 2020 to 2022, the annual building plan applications, they increased by 239%. Now, keeping in mind, this was over a two-year period, and within the same period, the number of employees, they remained the same, and vacancies were not filled immediately. So already, that, that was starting to jump out to us that there is quite substantial strain within the processes and employees that were feeling this. So by, by default of that, you know, it was, it was very easy to substantiate or justify the, the recommendation of ensuring there's, there's adequate warm bodies to help alleviate internal pressures and free up, um, free up in, uh, employees to focus on their respective tasks. There's overall efficiency in, inside the entire department. Then we look at the, the decrease in application circulation and commentary processes. So again, you know, within the, the building plan application process, there's, there's, specific steps within the process that requires commentary from internal as well as external departments and stakeholders. And within this particular example, some external departments were, were given or were assigned 14 plus days of, to comment. And in some instances where they don't respond, there was no feedback or follow up in that regard. So that's, that's one of those quick wins that we consider low hanging fruits. If we could easily slash that down by by seven days, then that already has a positive effect in terms of the approval uh, SLA. And then I also want to just touch on the establishing a client satisfaction or a perception index. And this speaks to closing the feedback loop or a feedback rating system. 
Um, others may even know it as a net promoter score system. In essence, what this does is it helps the municipality and the department receive feedback from its, its um, uh, clients, in this case, businesses, in terms of where they, they were doing well, in terms of where they were falling short. And more importantly, the way in which um, the department and employees need to look at, at feedback, it shouldn't be seen as negative criticism, but instead as an opportunity to identify which of those processes have, have fallen short or which of those processes aren't meeting the standards at which um, customers would be uh, happy with and serves as an opportunity to continuously improve and, and iterate on that process to take it to such an extent that it's, it's turned a negative into a, a positive and potentially even a strength for the department. Welcome back to the DPSA Batubele podcast and part two masterclass in business process management. Now to Sivanati Pembani, an admin clerk at the Eastern Cape Department of Transport. Pembani outlines the department's business process service delivery journey as well as the department's takeaway from consulting and developing the process journey. Our BPM journey, it starts with the, on the preparation phase where we manage buy-in and line management engagements from the, from the managers. We identify processes and then we have a calendar appointments and documentary analysis. And then there's process discovery phase where we introduce B BPM concept, develop an uh, enterprise architecture and develop as is uh, the process as is from the component that we. And then we have process analysis. With process analysis, we consult with role players. We identify bottlenecks, identify strengths and weaknesses, non-value adding steps, and we analyze inefficiencies, and then we suggest uh, improvements. And then we go to process design. With process design, we develop the to be of the of the of the process, and then we conduct with we consult with stake uh, with stakeholders. We facilitate for approval. We develop the SOP. We facilitate alignment with job descriptions, and then we have implementation phase. Uh, on the implementation phase, we hand out to process owner for implementation, and then we update our process inventory, which have, we have developed um, for record keeping and for, for us to know where we are in terms of developing our, our processes. And then we support with change management. And then we have the maintenance um, a stage where we monitor implementation of the process that we have developed and we identify gaps and then we do corrective measures. This is our uh, business process management planned calendar. This is where we plan prior the, the, the month, uh, which um, programs uh, we will be working with in terms of developing uh, the, the, the business processes. And then we set dates and then we communicate with them prior. This is the planned calendar. This is for this one is for August, which is which was last month. And then this is our, our process inventory that we developed in 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 order to, to keep track of the of the processes that we develop in our department. And then in our process inventory, we also have make a summary of how how far we are and how many uh, processes we have we have done so far. This is still the same uh, process inventory sheet where we have our, our summary depicted here. Our approach also includes the development of enterprise architecture, where we consult with, with the program and we try to outline um, the different processes the program has in order for us, for, for them to identify which processes they, they want to have in their, in, in their, um, in their program. So here we have program one program, which is our um, support program two, the transport infrastructure program three, transport operations program four, transport regulations 
program five, community-based program. That's our program five. And then we have government uh, management fleet services. That is the uh, enterprise architecture. In this example, we chose, this is for the Center for Technical Development, which falls under program two, where we outlined um, the processes that are within um, program two. And then we went down to, to outline the processes within the Center for Technical Development, which is our business architecture. Business process uh, management inputs to job descriptions because on job, it, 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 uh, on job descriptions, there are KRAs. That means what um, the post incumbent is supposed to, to be doing. And then in our business processes, we outline the activities. So the activities will then um, inform the job description, what the post incumbent is supposed to be doing. And then we have workload analysis where we measure the, the, the work that is being done uh, business process management also inputs to organizational structures, systems, and policies. Um, lessons learned uh, in our journey of, of developing and consulting with, the, with our department, we learned that business BPM supports organizational change. It improves performance and efficiency. It feeds the organizational structure and job descriptions. It enforces business continuity and BPM requests for compliance and delays on approval if left to process owners. Oh, the, there are also delays. These are the, also the lessons that we learned. Uh, there are delays when um, the process are left, the approval of the processes are left to process owners. Therefore, we took the, the owners to be the ones who, who facilitate the approval of the processes. We also learned that constant engagement with lung Land function is vital and SOP concept understood and that the SO, the standard operating procedure is understood differently by uh, people outside our, our component. Here we have our business process management examples. I'll start with the activity flow. We chose uh, a process of uh, vehicle allocation with fleet management. Oh, with the process, uh, we have three uh, officials who are, who are involved, three job titles, which is the admin clerk, the admin officer, and the assistant director. Okay, so we have our activity flow here with the admin clerk involved, admin officer, and assistant director. This is the vehicle allocation. It starts when the admin clerk receives uh, approved trip request with the uh, supporting documents that are approved, memo, invitation, weekly plan, trip request register, and driving license. And it then goes to uh, the admin clerk, then checks the vehicle availability using the approved trip request, request register and distribution register. And then after checking availability of e the vehicle, if the, ve uh, the vehicle is not available, the admin clerk will then inform the employee of the unavailability of the, of the vehicle and then the process ends. However, if the vehicle is available, it then goes to admin officer where uh, the, admin, the admin officer will issue the trip authority form. Uh, the supporting documents will be distribution register trip authority form. Uh, the admin officer will issue the, the trip authority form to the uh, employee who is requesting. And then they will receive the authorized trip authority from the, the requesting employee. And then they will pass it over to the assistant director who will approve the trip authority. And then after that, um, the admin clerk will, co will conduct inspection using the inspection list and logbook. And then the admin uh, clerk will also hand over, after inspecting, they will hand over the vehicle to the, um, to the requester, giving them the keys and the fuel card. And that's where the process ends. And then we also have um, our standard operating procedure template, which is uh, informed by the previous uh, activity flow, the business process map. We are now detailing what are the specific activities that are being done when um, the admin clerk checks the, when the admin clerk receives the approved uh, trip request. So they, they check completeness, 
check if the request is approved by a supervisor, check if the relevant documents are attached, which is the memo, invitation, weekly plan, driving license, and they check validity of the driving license. And then afterwards, the admin clerk will receive authorized trip form where she will or he will check completeness of the trip authority and forward trip as, uh, the trip authority to the assistant director for approval. And that the time frame for that activity is five minutes and he or she will be using the trip authority. The assistant director will approve trip authority where he or she will verify trip details against attached documents, sign overnight garaging if necessary, approve trip authority, issue vehicle, hand over, and forward it to whoever for it to be authorized. That will take him 10 minutes and he or she will be using approved trip authority form. Afterwards, the admin clerk will conduct the pre-inspection where she will check roadworthiness of the vehicle, confirm odometer reading, check vehicle accessories, which are a uh, jack, triangle, wheel spanner, spare wheel, and they will also check dents and damages. And that will take them 15 minutes using approved trip authority and logbook. And then the admin clerk will hand over the vehicle to the requester, where they will hand over vehicle keys, fuel card, logbook, and approved trip authority. And that will take them five minutes. They will be using approved trip authority, fuel card, and logbook. And that will be the end of our processes. And then in this template, we also have uh, the references part where the process owner will uh, provide us with the legislations that are involved in when the process is being done as, as the reference. And the cross references, which are the related SOPs and the policies that are also made as a reference when conducting this process. And then we also have the process risks where they will identify the risks that are incurred in, the, in this process. And then where they will, we will also um, have, uh, we also have a, a space for where they will also, um, they will also um, give us maybe the controlled description of how to maybe manage this risk or, or, or what will, or what they um, advise to be done in order to, 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 to mitigate the risk. And then we we'll also identify whether the, the risk is system or manual. And then we also have a, a, the review and revision where they, the, the, after approval, the SOP will be reviewed, uh, the reviewed or revised uh, three financial years from the date of approval. That's the end of our SOP template. The attendees of the masterclass were afforded a platform to ask questions by the facilitator, the Chief Director Operations Management at DPSA, Marcel Wilson. First question was, uh, they're having a challenge with a, in terms of uh, buy-in and would like to know exactly where business process mapping should reside in the organizational structure. So if the panelist can just share where uh, the business process mapping is residing, but I'll also uh, give an input from my side on that. The second question then is how was the institution managed uh, to promote a culture of continuous improvement? And I think that's that's very important as well. How do we ensure that continuous improvement is in the organization? What are the actual things they do and how does this lead uh, to improvement? And I think Fumani, uh, that question was posted whilst you were uh, presenting, but the others are also uh, very welcome to to input on that. And then there was a question, uh, again, uh, Fumani, uh, directed at you, in terms of highly regulated sections, directorates, such as the directorate that deals with the issuing of operating licenses for public transport, how do you deal with simplifying uh, their processes? So we'll take those three first. Maybe, um, if I may, uh, let me ask the panelists if uh, there's uh, comments. Firstly, uh, on these three questions, um, Michelle, can you please share 
uh, your experiences with regards to these questions? Um, on the issue of buying, um, I don't necessarily have a comment regarding where it should reside in the organizational structure, but buying should definitely be sought from the top. If, it, if, it, if it's not coming from your HOD level, unfortunately, the business, the process owners may not participate. Then on the culture, Again, I think this one, Aisha knows best about culture transformation, but I think what has been working for us recently is if, especially the more junior officials, if they understand the impact of, the, um, of their roles. And I would like to share uh, an example that um, we've experienced earlier on when the unit was started. So there was an admin clerk whose only responsibility was to review applications. Um, I, mean, I, I, I don't wanna um, share the department, but it is one of our provincial departments. But when we explained to him what the economic impact of that application is, how much jobs it creates or enables, what the value is for the Western Cape economy, etc. He understood in rand value the importance of the applications coming past his desk. So it elevated and made him understand how important his job is. And more recently, two days ago, um, our HOD wrote a letter to another admin person thanking them for enabling, I think, an application into our economy of 130 million rand. So it's important also to look at and help public servants understand the implications of the, um, the work, especially around, obviously for us, our mm -hmm. um, approach is business facing. So to understand how this impacts on businesses, because I think every person, every public servant can relate to a family member having a job or being unemployed, et cetera, and how that impacts um, um, the person. So yeah, that's our answer. The first two, uh, the culture as well as the um, way to get buy-in in terms of highly regulated um, licensing, um, I think there's always room to, to simplify processes. And if the legislation, especially the regulations have clear um, processes, I know many regulations says you must do one, two, three, four, but if, if it's a regulation problem, as I said, People write regulations. We write as public servants. I know it passes the parliamentary processes, but we are the ones that are drafting, drafting laws, and we should then um, advocate for regulatory reform. Thank you. Uh, maybe just very, very shortly. I think Michelle captured it really well. Um, but something that we found is also to incorporate the, the change management principles of um, ADCAR. So ADCAR stands for um, awareness. How do you create awareness about the change that is going to happen and, and, and so forth? Desire, how do you um, create a desire within your culture to be a part of the change? Um, knowledge, in how do you equip them with the knowledge and skills? So within the culture, don't just create the awareness and desire, but also give them the tools to do it themselves. Um, and this stems also with the next one um, in the change management principle um, called ability. So we're giving our culture the ability to be, a, to be part of this process improvement journey along with everyone else. And then I think lastly, the R in ADCAR would be for reinforcement. So how do we reinforce um, messaging, communication, success stories, best practices within the culture, um, and using those really basic change management principles um, for the process improvements. That brings us to the end of yet another insightful episode of DPSA Batupili podcast. Stay connected with us by subscribing and telling a friend to tell a friend. Until then, this is Kamudi Poko signing off. Hashtag Batupili. Batupili.